Everybody, welcome back! My name is Yumble, and today I'd like to show you a whole new approach to one of my favorite interchanges. This is all about the single point urban interchange. These methods will let you build it smaller than ever before, which is really the point of the single point urban interchange. It can move loads of traffic without taking up too much space, so I think it's a really good uh, set of techniques to learn. Everybody, thanks for being here. Let's talk spooey. Here we have an example of how I've always built the single point urban interchange. It's got all of the lefts converging at the center, which is great. It gives you a three cycle light. It's very fast and it's great for getting cars on and off the highway. But with the advent of new mods and different techniques in city skylines, I want to show you a different, more space efficient and realistic way of building the single point urban interchange. Here is where the setup is always going to begin with a service interchange. So we have a highway here and we want cars to get off the highway onto our arterial road. So I'm going to start by making an overpass. Uh, this one, you can make it into an overpass or an underpass or whatever you want, really. I'm going to do an overpass so that we can really see what this is doing uh, well. If we make it an underpass, then the most interesting part of this thing will be hidden under the roads, so I figure we'll we'll do this. Uh, I've got a standard spaced highway here of four units. You can't see it, there it is. Four units wide. We're actually gonna modify the highway spacing to make it even more compact, but also I am going to make a point in the middle here. So I wanna mark the center of the, of the single point of our interchange. So I'm just gonna make a, a road there and delete it. And now we've got a, a dead center of the whole thing. So this is two units away from each of these highway roads. Uh, this setup is going to require substantial use of node controller and traffic manager, as well as intersection marking tool. Intersection marking tool is optional, but uh, the rest of it is pretty non-negotiable. So I just mentioned the highway spacing. What I'm actually going to do is delete a few units here. I'm just going to get rid of a couple couple sections of highway and I'm going to use two lane highway for this uh, for what we're doing here two lanes grounded and we're going to end up sinking this so this will actually be negative five meters the overpass is positive five meters just to give you the uh, give you the difference here the best way that I've found to to do what I'm about to do is actually to use road guidelines and just bump each of these in one unit so I'm going to take the normal spacing and bump it in a single unit. And I'm just going to go all the way across. I don't know where the ends are yet, so I'm not too concerned with where the ends of this are going to be. I just need, I just need some roads. So another one, negative five meters going across. I'll show you the resolution to this later as well. But all this does is makes the highway a bit tighter so that we can keep our ramps a little bit closer for a more uh, realistic finish here. Of course, I'm also using the mods, uh, fine road tools and fine road anarchy to force roads to be elevated or grounded, as well as anarchy, which allows you to build roads in places where you normally couldn't. Uh, another trick here, I'm gonna use an asset from the Steam Workshop. This part is somewhat optional. Um, your mileage may vary, but I'm gonna use a three lane, one way road. The alternative is your three lane highway, which is very wide. So I'm actually using a three lane one way road from the Vanilla Plus series that is gonna allow us to uh, be a bit thinner. You'll notice this is a two unit wide road. So how far away is this? Let's see. Six units, sounds good to me. Let's do that. So six units away. Uh, I'm gonna go up to five meters high, which is the same height as this guy. And if you've seen my, my video about the continuous flow intersection, the technique is going to be very, very similar to that, though a little different, kind of a variation on a theme. Six units exactly. Cool. So I'm just using this road guideline, which happens to be six units away. Somewhat arbitrary, but I don't really mind. And we're going to go five meters high to match our overpass. Wonderful. And let's see if we can't do the same distance on this side. Does this happen to be six meters? Oh, it does. Wonderful. Um, is it really six units or is it fraudulent? That's the question. No, I think it's really six units. So let's go up to five meters once again and get all of these connected. With the single point urban inter interchange, it all hinges 
upon this node at the center. Very cool, very cool. Um, from here, I'm actually going to make some roads straight back as well. So I'm going to go to the end of this, uh, this section here. I'm going to opt to turn off snapping. So toggle node snapping is part of Find Road Anarchy. I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to try to use this road guideline here. If it will let me... Oh my goodness. I'm going to create my own road guideline, I guess. I'll make my own road guideline. There we go. So I'm looking for just parallel to the uh, to the existing highway here. I'm going to connect to this, turn snapping back on. Cool. I'm going to do that to all sides and get the same same measurements, and I'll check back in just a moment. Now I'm going to take a moment to adjust the directionality of the ramps in right-hand drive traffic. The right side will always be going up, and the left side will always be coming down back onto the highway. So same thing on the opposite side, right-hand traffic coming up the opposing traffic coming down to merge onto the highway. That's all good. I'm also going to use network multi-tool. This is optional. There's other ways to do this, but I'm going to use this to subtract a couple of nodes here because this entire inter uh, interchange only is going to rely on this one node at the center. And as I said earlier, we're going to be using uh, node controller substantially. So here's where the magic really happens. If you saw my continuous flow intersection video, you've already seen this technique, but we're going to apply it uh, a little differently here, but very similar still. Uh, I'm going to look at the light blue one, and I'm going to shift this one as high as it needs to go to appear to be going straight into the arterial. And that looks pretty good. I'm thinking... I'm thinking about 26 meters. Looks good. So basically, I'm just, I'm looking at this already existing road that's parallel to the highway, and I want it to look as though that road goes straight into the uh, arterial here. So maybe it's actually a little bit higher. Maybe it's 26 point... Oh, I don't know. Right about there. 26.5 looks really good. So the one across from this, the red node here, is actually going to be negative... 26.5. So if you hold control, like I said, you can get those uh, decimal points. So I'm going to take this one to negative 26.5. Same thing on the other side. This yellow node, so the, the incoming traffic from the highway, is going to be shifted positive 26.5. 26. Hold control to get the 0.5. And the orange one, negative 26.5. You can hold uh, shift for increments of 10. Hold nothing for for one at a time. And then hold control to get your, your 0.5 in there. Cool. So that's a complete mess, but we're about to sort this out. I'm going to adjust the offset of all of the roads, actually, so that some texture appears in the middle. So I'm going to go up to something something high, like 45 for now. And I'm also going to make ends straight on this. Boom. There we go. And the mess is all cleaned up, and we have a fairly nice platform to work from. Uh, next, we're going to swap out these roads and see if we can figure out all of the offsets. I actually ended up deciding that 10 units away was a better option. I think before I had it 6 units away, and it was a bit close to the center, because we are going to be expanding this node quite a bit, so we're going to need that, that space. So I'm now... Uh, the nodes that are connecting to the intersection are 10 units away, and that shift has been modified to 25 and negative 25 meters. So on the right side, the blue there is, is 25. The opposing red is negative 25. Change the measurements a little bit. I also swapped out the roads as promised. So the network we're gonna be using is an asymmetrical five plus three road. This one features two left turn lanes. I'll link it in the description. It'll also be linked in the Steam Workshop um, along with the asset. If you just want to put this in your city, you can. It's going to be linked in the description uh, for use, but it's from the Ultimate American Roads Pack. Great asymmetrical roads in there. The thing now that I feel I have to do is actually measure the, the turning radius. Not really measure, but I, I just want to eyeball it. Cars are going to be turning left 
onto the arterial and off of the arterial, and I need to make sure that they're not going to run into one another in the middle. So let's, let's visualize that here using intersection marking tool. So that is our left going onto the highway. So you can see the math here. We've got two lanes turning left onto two lanes, and then there's a right turn lane here so that cars can kind of merge in there. Uh, let's do the opposing one as well so we can see how close they are. These two miss each other, fortunately. I don't think that's going to be the case for the traffic coming off the highway. So here's the, the two lanes turning left off the highway, and we're leaving another lane so that cars can turn right from the highway as well. The opposing left turns, and look, because there's overlap there, the fact that these two lines cross one another means that we need to buy them a little bit more space. So I'm going to go back to node controller and expand everything until un, until these miss one another. So at the very least, uh, what I can do is maybe we'll expand them all a little, actually. Let's see what happens if I... That actually looks great. That's 49, 48. I think 48 is probably good. We'll get a nice little marking in the middle. We'll make a little island there. Looking good, though. All the connections look right. Everything looks fine to me. I'm not going to do the full markings just yet. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, but let's take a second and do the uh, traffic manager setup. So here is what this looks like. The left turns, as stated before, coming off the highway. That's great. And we can do the opposing ones, too. Coming off the highway. Coming off the highway. Uh, the left turns going onto the highway look like this. Excuse the angle. <laughs> the cars will drive on the road, I promise. And left turns onto the highway. Uh, right turning traffic is free and clear on all sides. All of the right turns get their own lane, which is great. You love to see it. And the straight through traffic will actually go straight through and miss the right turning traffic. So use the same two lanes that left turning traffic from the highway is coming are coming to. Use those also for your, your crossing traffic so that traffic can get across the thing. And the left one. And that is it, all contained within one node. The last real thing that we need to do is get this connected up to the highway. Let's do it. I've prepped this whole side for connecting to the, to the rest of the highway, uh, but I want to show you how I did it. There are little tricks all along the way. I actually already did this side as well. So on the last one here, what I've decided to do is take our shifted segment that, that connects to the center here, but it's shifted over here. That's 10 units. I actually want this to go down for seven more units, I've decided. So I'm going to start there using Anarchy. We're going to get this to ground. It's going to look a little bit weird, but it'll work out, I think. Uh, get rid of that short segment there. And we'll turn this road backwards, looking good. Uh, the trick here, that node is a bit funky because the game actually reads this as a bent node because it thinks it's going from here to the center. When in reality, what we want it to look like a, like a straight through middle node. Unfortunately, there isn't an option for that, but we can flip it from custom to bend and it'll fix that texture, which is great. Uh, the, about the last thing I want to do is slope the whole thing using uh, Network Multi-Tool. There's this Set Slope mode. We're going to click the center, and we're going to click the end piece. Slope the whole thing. Sometimes you have to click this piece again with Node Controller. So I'm going to go back to this with Node Controller and make sure that it's sloped. And there we go. For the highway, I actually want to do something very similar. I'm going to delete this segment and we're going to bring this up to the same spot that this one ends. So we're going to take the two lane highway starting on the ground here. So we're at negative five meters. We're going to go up to zero meters directly across from these two roads using the guidelines. Same thing on the second bit of highway using our road guideline there. Uh, for this one, it's going to be helpful to turn off toggle node snapping again. If you're trying to do these fine things in between two nodes that are already existing, to stop it from snapping back and forth to each of them, you can you can uh, toggle that, that switch. And it looks like node controller's being funky there, so we're going to turn that to middle, 
call it a day. Um, so the last, one of the last things, I keep saying the last thing we need to do, We all, there's also a traffic light to set up in the middle, so stay tuned for that. But the way that we're gonna connect this to the highway is I'm gonna pick an amount. Uh, you'll notice that because of the way that we moved the the underpass, because we moved them closer together, this is dead center between the two of them. So what I have to do is decide how far away the split is going to occur. And I'm thinking maybe five units or so. Yep, five units looks good. So I'm gonna make a bit of an anchor point at five units right in between these two networks. So this is dead center on those two. I'm gonna reconnect this highway to that dead center point with node snapping on. Should be 180 degrees, beautiful. Delete that little segment there. And let's see if five units was, was the way to go. On the left side, we're going to use two lane highway. And you can modify this to suit your own needs. I just happen to be using two lane highway all over the place here. Turn that the correct direction. That looks good so far. So just to say what I did there, freeform road tool. On this one, I'll do highway ramp. So one lane highway effectively. I'm gonna go off the end of the ramp with freeform road tool, click, and then click that node there. Turn the whole thing backwards and we should be essentially good. This node looks like it's a little funky, so I'm gonna click on it and hope for the best. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. So to, to reiterate, just to show that one more time, five units looks really good. The further you go, the smoother the, the curve will be, the smoother the split, but you also risk clipping of the textures. You also risk some, some other issues. So five units seems to be a sweet spot for me. So I'm gonna go dead center of these two nodes. I know that they're two units apart, so we're gonna go over one unit, which makes an anchor for this highway. Beautiful. Delete that little bit. Freeform road tool with two lane highway. Get this reconnected. And I'm gonna use highway ramp for the other one. The lane math may have to change. But that is essentially what we're doing. Uh, a little bit of intersection marking tool here will also go a long way to clean this up. I'm gonna get this, uh, get the other side figured out, maybe mark it up a little bit and we'll see how it looks. And here it is, the completed single point urban interchange, operational, moving lots of traffic. I'm very happy with the result actually. Uh, the footprint of it is very realistic. The whole point in the real world of this interchange is that it's very slim and can go in the middle of a city. So I'm glad to, to see that looking very realistic. Uh, it's all marked up. And of course there's a traffic light in the center. Basically it's left turns off of the highway, left turns onto the highway, and then the third phase is straight through traffic. So it's a three phase light. You'll also notice that I've reduced the on-ramps down to two lanes and then down to one lane. So it goes uh, three lanes, two lanes, one lane onto the highway. You can configure that a bunch of different ways depending on your traffic needs and, and the lane math that you want to commit to. Uh, but that is essentially it. I have another video that goes in depth on the traffic light scenario for this. So feel free to check out my traffic light video. Uh, of course, I've got a bunch of other tutorials. So subscribe here for a bunch of cities, skylines information. But that is all I have for today. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. Feel free to check me out on Twitch. Feel free to join up on the Discord if you have any questions or if you want to post pictures and videos of your city. Uh, that's a great place to do it. Everyone, thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.